Hello everyone. In this simple application, I will introduce you model view you model pattern on Android. And for this simple application, we will build a basketball game. So this basketball uh, application will keep track of score for team A and team B. And you will be able to update the score on the left side, on the right side. So using advantage of your model will be presented in this tutorial. And the most important, I would like to show you uh, the feature that make a view model um, attractive. So when you flip the phone, you will see that uh, data is persistent between rotations in this case. So what is the advantage of that? You don't need to do a lot of preparation that we did with you in the past uh, by saving instant state of the application between rotations. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to talk about some historical context. Uh, historically, Android was poorly designed and there had been absolutely no architectural guidelines. Official tutorials demonstrated how to put all applications logic inside activities and fragments, and developers did exactly that for many years and in some cases still do. The pain was real and many seasoned Android developers have horror stories about maintaining these apps since none of the existing patterns can be 100% used. So some available patterns adopted for Android today, MVC, Model View Controller, MEP, Model View Presentation or Presenter, and Model View View Model, MVVM, the latest one. So let's start with MVC and MVP. So the idea was to have a clean modular independent code and MVC design pattern split the application into three main aspects, model, view, and controller. It forces a separation of concerns. It means the main model and controller logic are decoupled from user interface view. As a result, maintenance and testing of the application became simpler and easier. So this is a diagram for MVC. You probably remember this from the previous courses and for the uh, introduction to Android development. So model represents a set of classes that describe the business logic, uh, such as business model as well as that associated with the classes. Uh, view is represent the UI components. And finally, controller is responsible for processing incoming requests from user. And typically, control, uh, controller acts as coordinator between view and model. Uh, the MV MVP is very similar to MVC. A little difference between MVC and MVP that controller now named as presenter. And you see here there is no in link between a model and view. So in this case, if you see uh, MVC model, we're able to change a view, but in this case. Uh, model and view uh, know each other through, through presenter. That's, an, that's a restrictions. So this difference uh, display in the slides. So in NBC, the view gets notified of any changes in the model state by model itself. In MVP, the view knows nothing about the model. It becomes presenter's job to fetch up to date data from the model, understand whether the view should be updated and bind a new data to the view. Uh, second, the views in MVC tend to have more logic in, the th in them because they are responsible for handling notifications from the model. In MVP, the same logic is located in presenter, which makes the view very dumb. Uh, their sole purpose becomes rendering of the data that would bound to them by presenter and capturing the user input. And finally, in MVC, the view is aware of model existence whereas the MVP, both the view and the model, know nothing. So uh, as practice show, none of these uh, approaches uh, does work for the big project. So there was the idea to consider something different and it was come up with MVVM on Android, model, view, view model on Android. So pattern uh, MVVM is similar to MVC in that two components, the model and view. So in this case, uh, model is still contains all data classes, 
uh, data classes, uh, database, API, and repository. So data and logic. The view is still the UI, UI part that represents the current state of information that is visible to the user user view. And the model something is between. So this contains the required data in the view and translates the data which is stored in the model, which can be presented inside view. So in this case, uh, view model and view are connected through the data binding and observable live data. So we'll talk about this uh, next lecture. And view model connected uh, with model using some kind of repositories. So this is more introduction to the philosophy of to the MVVM pattern. So the view uh, binds to observable variables and actions exposed to view model. It is possible to multiple for multiple views to bind to a single view model. The view model is responsible for wrapping the model and preparing preparation observable data needed for the view. It also provides hooks for the view and pass data events to the model. So the model is responsible for exposing methods, commands, and other properties that helps to maintain the state of the view, manipulates the model as a result of actions on the view, and trigger events in the view itself. It supports two way data binding between a view and view model. The most important features of why view model was introduced to manage life cycle. And life cycle of view model is very interesting. The view model class is used to store and manage UI-related data in lifecycle conscious way. It lets data to survive configuration changes such as screen rotation. So you see here the uh, view model is the first time active when the on create is called. And the system may uh, call and create several times through the life of the activity, such as when a device screen rotated. But the view model exists from your first requested until the application is or activity is finished and destroyed. So this is important to understand that on cleared method is called only when application is destroyed and activity is not longer visible and active in the stack. So this advantage make view model scope is very useful to keep and manage all data that is stored in the activity of fragment. So we'll see this in our tutorial today. So what is the NVM advantage? The advantage of VM will be probably more clear when we start a bigger project with the, uh, with the different uh, multi-layer architecture, like activity fragment on the top, uh, view model of the live data, the second, and repository on the third level that divided by model, for example, with database, room and SQLite. On the right side, it's a remote data source using retrofit and web service. So what is the advantage of this uh, multi-tier uh, architecture uh, using MVVM? The UI components are kept away from the business logic. The business logic is kept away from database operations. The repository is acting as a hub for incoming and outgoing data. The view model is monitoring the repository for changes in the data sets and then updates the UI accordingly. A view model can tell other components to retrieve data, for example, a repository, and it can handle incoming requests from a user to modify the data. And finally, it makes code maintainable for long run. So when you have this separate features, its application will be much easier to manage and maintain. Steps to setting up uh, a use and using view model Android application. So today we are going to talk about the main steps and then we will introduce them in the tutorial application about uh, tracing basketball score game. So step number one, create a view model class. In general, you will make a view model class for each screen in your app. This view model class will be extending view model and will hold all of the data associated with the screen and have getters and setters for the stored data. This separates the code to display the UI, which is implemented in your activities and fragments from your data 
which now lives in the view model. The second step will be associate your uh, UI controller and view model. Uh, the UI controller, kind of like activity or fragment, needs to know the view model, and this is so your controller can display the data and update the data where UI, UI interaction happened, such as pressing a button to do something in your app. Please note, view model should not, though, hold a reference to activities, fragments, or context. Your model should not contain elements that contains reference to UI controllers such as views, since this will create an indirect reference to a context. The reason you should not store this object in the model outline your specific UI controller instance, if you rotate the activity three times, you have just created three different activity instances, but you have only one view model. With that in mind, we have to create a UI controller view model association. And you will want to create a member variable for the model in your controller class. Then in create, you can call something like this, uh, view model provider, uh, your UI controller, kind of like uh, local activity, this, dot get. And you will use your view model class uh, object variable with extension class. And the next step, uh, probably the biggest, the last step will be the use view model in your controller. Uh, here you will access or, in, or change UI data. You can now use the data in your view model in the same fashion, but by using your model object in your activity fragment. So this is come, so some kind of closer look for view model provider. So um, I would like to tell you that there is two methods to uh, connect to view model, view model provider and view model providers off. So it looks like uh, view model providers off deprecated already and we can use uh, only view model provider. So this method is called, what's happened in here? We will return a pre-existing view model object associated with specific, with specific main activity uh, and model associated with this class. So this works only if you pass in the correct UI controller as the first argument. Uh, while you shouldn't never store a UI controller inside your model, the view model class does keep track of associations between view model and UI controller inside behind in, uh, instance behind the scenes. Using the UI controller, you pass as the first argument. And you see it's done using a private value view model by lazy initialization. So why are we using uh, this uh, initializ initialization by lazy? Um, so once we uh, flip the phone, or any subsequent access to the on create and to this lazy value of your model will return the previously initialized object, if any. So this is advantage to preserve the data uh, between rotations. The advantage preserve uh, data uh, of view model instance. So it now will be a turn to build a simple application using model view view model. So in this case, uh, you have to start new project from the scratch and name main activity something like a basketball activity using Kotlin. To save, di to save time, you can use uh, the download online uh, new layout file, activity main XML, and replace your current layout content with this new one. So it should be looks like on the right in your XML editor. So code would have multiple errors due to the unimplemented on click method uh, attached to the button declared inside XML. So please ignore it, you will implement them later. The next you have to follow steps from one to five using the next slides. Uh, so step one. So in order to create uh, and use your model, you have to add dependencies to Gradle, uh, such as Android lifecycle view model KTX uh, with using lifecycle version. So if you're not aware about uh, your uh, number, the recent version numbers, you will first need to uh, visit Android website if you're interested, developer android.com, jetpack, android x release, lifecycle, declaring dependencies. 
Second step, you have to create a view model. So basically, this is your view model will be very simple in this case because this is the introduction to view model on Android. So we use uh, one variable for the track the score for team A and another variable using to track the score for team B. Step three will be create association the UI controller and view model. And uh, as I just mentioned, you have to uh, obtain your model from your model provider. In this case, uh, you will use, in this case, you will create private value score view model uh, by lazy and connect to existing score view model uh, class Java. Um, the next, you see example of both reading and writing to the new model. Just for your reference, it's uh, very easy. For example, add one score for team A. Um, in this case, it's showing you how we access score view model object and uh, the variable score team. In this case, uh, score team will be updated by one. So please note, uh, an implemented method can be commented here and you have to implement them. Uh, after this tutorial. So this is all of this implemented missing method in this in this diagram. So every button has uh, pre-existed, pre-attached method to Android on click property. Additionally, you have to add the code for the two un unimplemented method in activity to display the current total score, display for team A and display for team B. And finally, when you complete application, don't forget to run from run this application and check how it works. So because of the view model use, your application should 100% persistent upon device rotation. So when you're done, uh, submit as a project in a temp folder online with your personal reflections. Uh, so please note, we will be using this application later to uh, study the next uh, topic uh, based on uh, model view, view model. Uh, regarding live data. So if you have any question about MVVN, please let me know. Thanks a lot.